Okay. Ah. I was uh, today. I was watching. I was. <laughs> I was watching videos on YouTube because I had a slow work day, and. Uh, you don't need to justify it to us. Okay. Yeah. This that's not like any of your employers listen because that would mean that we, people would have to listen to this podcast first, <laughs> okay. and then, then maybe they'd listen. And that's a small sliver of the people yeah. who is already a small sliver would be people who employ me. I think there actually is a client or two who listens to me, but who knows? Um, Do you want to call them out right now? Yeah. Give them give us their name and address. Uh, I don't know the Andrews family. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Uh, but I was watching videos on DJing, mm. and I think it's easy. Yeah, I think you think you don't think it's not, a problem. I'm not, I'm not talking like playing music DJ. I'm saying scratching DJ. I think scratching is easy. I, I based on my impression of it, you know, you well, just, you just like scratching lotto tickets or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you take out a coin. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, uh, we've got somebody here who does musicianship, right? Like you know, generally, you know, he likes to play music and stuff like a lot more than you do or I do, right? I'd like to hear his perspective on it, you know. <laughs> yeah, Jack, uh, Mr. Musicianman. Yeah, a, a musician. I, I've never scratched a record in yeah. my life. <laughs> Can you call yourself a musician if you've never scratched a record? I think I so. I think so. I feel like the only thing is, I mean, I have a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people have scratched records as in gotten into their dad's record collection and, and accidentally destroyed them. Mm. Which, well, I've done that, but, yeah. but I'm careful I don't scratch them. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, of course not. Uh, that's how we know I'm a true musician. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he respects the craft. He's here, to, here's to maintain the, the, the integrity of the, so, the music. So why why do you, A, think it's easy, and two, or B, what, why were you attracted to it? Um, because I realized that there's this there was this boom in DJing that happened in the early 2000s with, like, new metal. You know, mm-hmm. with like Limp Biscuit and Corn and like all these bands that had yeah, because they had a DJ knot. yeah standing in the back. Yeah, going there'd at always it. be a guy, and then like halfway through every album or something, you'd hear like one record scratched, and then it's like, oh, it's the DJ. He did something on this record, mm-hmm. or that, or maybe uh, the for Limp Biscuit, which very funny. Their DJs, DJ Lethal, mm. made famous for producing the song "Jump" by House of Pain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, as, 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 an, as an Irish boy, you know, you have to have nothing but respect for Jump by <laughs> House of Pain. I but that was a Van Halen song. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I was thinking of, was Jump by Van Halen. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it's the jump, jump, jump. Oh, everybody, yeah, everybody, jump, jump. You know, jump. Yeah, yeah, it's got yeah. the squeak, the <laughs> You know, yeah. thing. I well, I think the, the Patrick's core... Day is coming up, and you don't know Jump by House of Pain. Well, there you go. I think the core difference is that Jump by House of Pain has a higher jump per second than <laughs> Jump by Van Halen. Right. That's uh, true. Jump by Van Halen is jump. Da, da, da. We got a long time before the next then, jump. But, 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 but he's emphatic. Yeah, jump. <laughs> yeah. He, he emphasizes down. it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. Down. Instead of the uh, you know the biblical literary practice of repeating things in order to emphasize them, you know, yes. he goes with a much more simplistic. You know, just uh, well, say it twice, right? but be emphatic. House of Pain though universalizes it. They go everybody jump. Yeah. You know? okay. I've, I've, okay. So far, it sounds like the only person jumping is whoever Van Halen is yes. talking to directly. Exactly. Yeah. Which is me, which, by the which way. Which Van Halen was that? Like, what do you mean? There's, there's Van Halen. There's uh, yeah, Van Halen two electric boogaloo. No, no, like there's, what? There's, there's, <laughs> there's Hagar Halen. So like like there's like three different singer generations in Van Halen. I, I forget who the guys. Sammy Hagar I know is one of them. I think he's Van Halen two or mm-hmm. something. I don't. know. I'm being ridiculous. Regardless, mm-hmm. I was watching a lot of videos of guys who got into DJing because of rap rock, and now that's not a genre anymore. And so they just like sit in their basement and DJ by themselves because mm-hmm. nobody will hire them. Uh, that's sad. Yeah, it, that's really sad. It's that's incredibly depressing. Sad. Do you have an etymology for DJ? Disc jockey. Oh. Yeah, the guy who switches a disc at a party. Yeah. Or on a radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah yes, exactly. exactly. So yeah. when you listen to a radio DJ, he's the disc jockey. Did you, speaking of, did you see, I got a notification about this today, Spotify's AI DJ. You I, got, about a, I this? got a notification. I got a notification today. I tried it out. I tried it out today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> basic concept is it's an AI voice. Really? Of a, of a DJ. Hey, everybody, let's go, let's jump. No, no, no. He's <laughs> he's he like an Indian AI. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Like 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 you know. We jump. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you, when I feel like every time you you like see videos of DJs, they're like Swedish, and they're like, "Is everybody having good time?" Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are those the ones that are in the basement listening to rap rock? Or? Yeah. No, those are different. Those are all just fat guys with flat brims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, different from you, by because of the flat brim, correct? Yes, yes exactly. yeah, yeah. Same 
general. They're archetype. not bearded though. They're they're, oh, they're really clean shaven. Yeah, straight edge, straight edge, yeah. straight edge guys. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, it's a it's an AI voice that's v- remarkably, remarkably good. Like yeah. I cannot tell the difference between him and actual natural speech. And he was talking about like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and if you ever want to like just listen to something and you know you want to just enter a vibe, like I'm here if you need me. You know, <laughs> I, I I know that like in the last month you listened to Death Grips. If you're interested, like I, we're gonna be playing some more Death Grips and stuff adjacent to Death Grips. You know, if you don't like that, then just hit that button. I'll move on to a different genre. <laughs> I was like, dude. This is way too weird. There's gonna yeah, be people who they always make it really personal. Yeah, yeah. I'm exactly. Here for you. Yeah. yeah, you and your love There's of people two who, songs yeah. from Death Grip. So that's all. That's There's the gonna, only thing. You I'm, to. I'm just gonna say this out front. There's gonna be people who want to have sex with that robot. <laughs> <laughs> True. They're gonna be falling True. asleep. It's like what we were talking about yesterday with. Uh, um, as, uh, uh, parasocial relationships. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be falling asleep every night to the dulcet tones of. I heard that you like. Death Grips. <laughs> Would you like me to play more Death Grips? You know, you're like, ah. Uh, well, it was uh, it was funny. Yorg, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, like, I, this is, this is like. You're bringing nerdy. it up. Well, I, I got to see. Okay, yeah. So, uh, if you don't know, a metal band by the name of Under Oath has recently released an album. I, yeah. I do not know who Under Oath are, really. Yeah. Uh, I have listened to metal in the past on my Spotify. And so when I skipped the Death Grips playlist, because there's only so much you could listen to of Death Grips on a work day, uh, it was like, all right, you know, we're going to move on to some, you know, newest music in metal. And then l- talked about the new album from Under Oath, the inspiration of the song and how the sound was a change or a, a return to form for the band. Right. Like actual analysis of the music is there, too. It's it's weird, dude. It's surreal. It's probably just ripping it from genius or something. Uh, I mean, probably, but yeah. still, yeah. Well, yeah. If you if, if y'all are on Brave, they have the Brave AI summarizer. Mm. Okay. Anytime I would, you so wait, Google what's Brave anything, again? Brave is just like a privacy oh, browser. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anytime you Google anything, it'll give you the first thing that shows up is a summary of whatever the thing is. Yeah. Say you you want to know more about Theseus and the Minotaur, it'll give you some <laughs> really shitty summary. Yeah. <laughs> About a guy who went to an island one time. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Actually, Google sort of does that a little bit, where it'll like, if you type in a proper noun, it'll like excerpt a random paragraph from Wikipedia, and sometimes it'll be far too deep, and you're like, this is totally inaccurate. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man. Yeah. No. I, I. I'm. What do you think about the world filling everything in for you nowadays? It's like everything that we use is constantly trying to beat you to the punch mm-hmm. on research or like beat you to the punch on making an opinion on something. It just assumes you want to learn specifically what it's trying to tell you. I don't know. It's autofill. It's kind of dangerous. Dangerous, huh? That's yeah. that's the that's the read. That's the hot take here. Well, dangerous. I'm, I'm just saying that it, it it makes it so that it's really tough for people. I think more often than not, people are lazy. I'm lazy. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so rather than just kind of actually doing the work to read about the thing or figure out the nuances, discuss the nuances, as, mm-hmm. we, as we say on the show. Mm-hmm. But as, 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 as rather than discussing the nuances, they kind of just go to the, the first thing that pops up and kind of inculcate it. And mm-hmm. because it's trying to, you know, the algorithms is, you know, you can't have a podcast without saying the algorithms at least twice. <laughs> um, the algorithms that we know are very focused on specific narratives and structures. And because of that, it's kind of, pushing people in a very strong direction. I don't know. I found that I find that worrisome. But well, depending upon how much I actually care about the subject, I find that it stokes my pride a little bit. <laughs> so that I want to outdo the AI summarizer. Yes. There you go. There you go. And See, I th- find myself doing real research. Isn't that the best case scenario though when it comes to humanity's reaction to AI conveniences? The John Henry. Yeah, it's to be like, <laughs> well, all right, cool, you can do that, but I a man can do you better, right? It's like the classic Will Smith line. But can a robot make a painting? And the robot says, well, can you? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be able to come back and say, yes. I yes, can. I can. Yes. yes. Paint a masterpiece. <laughs> write a symphony. Yeah, yeah. That's Alan Tudyk, by the way. He plays the robot. Yeah. Yes. Great name. Great name, Alan. Alan, Tudyk. Alan Tudyk. <laughs> uh, s- Speaking of, uh, Oscars last night. I don't know if anybody cared about it whatsoever. <laughs> Did you? I don't care at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I, this is probably the least interested. I'm. Well, it's it's fun that uh, everywhere. Uh, sorry, everything everywhere all, all at once won. Yeah, that's cool. But uh, I saw some why? people very upset about that. Why did Brendan Fraser win Best Actor? <laughs> I mean, I know why. Yeah, but 
Oh, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's... Oh, is he the whale guy? Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. you watch the movie? I didn't watch no, it. No, no, I saw no, some clips it's... from it, though, and it looked bad. Like, it, looked it looks really bad. bad. <laughs> yeah. you, there's the, the... You gotta tell him about the scene with the bars. Yes, yes. Yeah. There's a scene where it's, it's almost like something out of a cartoon. He's, like, sitting there, and he opens up a drawer, because he's hungry, and it's got various granola bars in it. Mm-hmm. And he, like, grimaces. He's like... <sighs> And he closes it, and he opens up one that has candy bars, and he goes. <laughs> 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 it's like, Again, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's a sight gag from The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I cannot that's imagine that Homer would do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot imagine that in so, a, an actual Oscar bait. There's film. like a scene. I'm pretty sure there's a scene where he's crying and eating ranch on pizza. Like it's it's, yeah, it's classic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I would cry too. You know, I, well, actually, I will say that that is cry a, with joy. Yeah, that is a, a guilty pleasure of mine. I know that guilty pleasures don't exist or whatever, Shad. But like, well, are you familiar with um, where's Milwaukee again, Wisconsin? Are you familiar with something called veggie pizza? <laughs> yes, my uh, my wife's family has made veggie pizza before. I've had veggie pizza. As a Nebraskan, you should be sort of tangentially. Aware of this? Are you Shad, Shad actually, wore the Nebraska shirt. Nebraska shirt today. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Not in your yeah. honor. I just sort of wore Probably it. Probably in your wife's honor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, Nebraska. It's got its talents and everybody. Our dad's from Nebraska. Your dad's from Nebraska. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that. Yeah, he yeah. was born in no, Nebraska. No, our mutual dad. Yeah. You and I. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dad we My share. My dad's not from Nebraska. Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. No, uh, where was he born? He was born in Crete, I believe. Crete. Where is that again? It's near Lincoln. Okay, that's yeah. why I don't care about it. Are you on the Omaha side as far as the state? No, I'm out in the boonies, dude. Oh, okay. Mm. Kennesaw, Nebraska. Kennesaw. 900 people and I don't know how many more cows. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Man, 900 people, that's tiny. Yeah. Like, Hillsdale is a thriving metropolis. Uh, yes. No. Wait, you guys got a McDonald's here? <laughs> All we got is a Runza hut. The only thing we got. No, we don't even have that. We got the Silver Dollar Bar and Grill. Uh, okay. And Bet they you they make. I mean, depending upon the management, which changes about every two years. Yeah, mm. um, which makes sense. Yeah, the co- only cool thing about the Silver Dollar Bar and Grill is that they have real silver dollars embedded in the bar. Nice. That is three <laughs> expensive. <laughs> only <laughs> three. <laughs> only three. They can't even find more silver dollars than three. <laughs> Jeez. I think. Yeah. I, at that yeah. point, you should I just like have actually, one so that it's the silver dollar bar. Or, and yeah, grill. that's true. Yeah, and I, not have multiple. It kind of reminds me of, you know, like every kid eventually gets gifted one of those 50 states quarter things. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you got five of them and you're like, I really got to start a 50 states quarter bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guy reaches into his pocket. He's like, I got three of these suckers. It's yeah. enough. Yeah, it's enough. Uh, before, we, we, we don't want to leave people hanging on the veggie pizza. Just oh, okay, yeah, of, veggie yeah, pizza. Yeah, it's it's basically, do, you, do you know? Sorry, you were interrupted. I mean, I thought everybody. Everybody knew about veggie pizza. Really? So you do know? Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, if, so stop me if I'm in, if I'm incorrect here, but it's crescent roll, right? As the no, he, are you thinking of just pizza with vegetables on? That's it? what I'm thinking. No, no I don't ain't. know what you're thinking. It ain't, about. brother. It's not that. It's okay, not that. Do so tell. This guy, the, the, the national consciousness got introduced to veggie pizza because uh, former Governor Scott Walker posted on Twitter a photo of him eating it, and okay. people were like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's literally crescent roll, like Pillsbury crescent roll. Okay. Which you know you gotta love like good Midwestern food, which just reappropriates Pillsbury for just various different things. Oh, yeah. uh, and the thing that that is, so that you take crescent roll, you push it into a dough like square, mm-hmm. right? You bake it with like carrots and broccoli. Oh yeah. And you know like cucumbers or oh no, no carrots, broccoli, and like. <laughs> Bell peppers, mm-hmm. usually. Bell peppers, And then sure. you just put ranch on it, and okay. that's, that's a veggie pizza. Well, no, so it very importantly oh. is that the uh, base. Oh, cheese as Yeah, well. it's a sour cream base. It's it's like it's like a, a thick sour cream uh, <laughs> with like, uh, what's that? What's that really thick cream? I forget what it is. Uh, stuff in a cheesecake. Cream cheese. Cream cheese, yeah. Mm. Cream cheese, cream base. Put the stuff on top of it. Cut it up. Dip it in ranch. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah, but I know this fan. genre of food. Yes, it's like Depression era <laughs> meets creative boomer. Yes, know? yes, yes. It's definitely very boomerish. It's very, yeah. it's very, very boomerish. It's like the entire casserole thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. So in Nebraska, this is like the specialty. If you have. You ever go to like Lutheran potlucks? Yes, <laughs> yes. You classic. Get all kinds of awesome dishes. One of my favorites was the Jello. The Jello dishes. It's like a pan full of Jello with shredded carrots, marshmallows, um, and any other 
oddities you can think of. Shredded pecans. carrots. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine the pecans and the marshmallows are shredded carrots. Yeah. It's like a carrots. carrot cake, but yes, it's jello. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, strange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean the seventies were obsessed with jello. It was a it was a classic. Yeah. Rightly so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's it? Yeah. <laughs> it is the hooves. <laughs> yeah. The taking... cloven hoof yeah. of a beast. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> it'd be kind of funny if it's the devil it's, that's why they call it devil's <laughs> devil's cake or whatever it's called. Uh, the devil's food. food. Yeah, but that's, that's there's no jello in there. Yeah. Oh, okay, come, my on, bad, my come on, my bad. Right, right. yeah. um, What's the difference between devil's food cake and angel's food cake? Well, angel food cake is the like the tastes terrible. It's like the sponge cake. Is yeah, more fun. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like that cringe ass. Usually, uh, chocolate, or usually, if it's if it's got an evil name, it's got chocolate in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? It's it, yeah, an aphrodisiac. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. It causes man to sin. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's why our uh, latent Gnosticism. <laughs> yeah, it's why uh, it's why Saint Thomas Aquinas says that during Lent we should refrain from eating all meats because it inflames the passions, <laughs> mm. uh, which is very funny. He's having too many uh, oysters. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think he actually does mention oysters as well. But have been reading too much BAP. Yeah, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I trust me, I have not been reading any. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good, but like uh, a true man, like a true man. Uh, yeah, but I, I. I I love the, you know, I have very little respect for, like, the mid-century food boom stuff. Like, I'm not a huge casserole fan, though. My wife, who is a Nebraskan born and raised, you know, born and raised, Omaha, uh, of course, has a very large soft spot for the casserole, so that'll come out every once in a while, and I, mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I enjoy my slop when I get it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do sort of feel like a pig a little bit when it's just, like, tater tots and soup. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, that tater tot casserole? Yeah, yeah. yeah hell classic. yeah, dude. Yeah, or like, yeah. you know, like potato chips and, like, green beans. And you're like, what the heck? <laughs> it's great. You yeah. know, it's warm, it's savory, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's got enough sodium. To, yeah, it's got a lot of salt in it. <laughs> yeah, to that's give it for sure. great no, white My, my wife heart, recently heart did some blood work, and she had almost no sodium in her system, which was the biggest surprise of my entire life because her family is obsessed with salt. She'll eat a jar of green olives, just a, a whole jar of green olives for the sake of the salty flavor. Yeah, so the, uh, who, knew, well, who knows why? The reason people have high sodium is because of like processed food usually. It's not because they're eating like too much salt in their food. Mm. So like too many uh too many boring McDonald's guys we got uh, freaking uh, uh, jack duffy on the podcast uh we got jack duffy uh <laughs> bye guys <laughs> uh local local ruffian uh i'd say so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. something yeah. like that yeah uh we already said musicianly person musicianly man uh which actually speaking of uh this is completely tangential to anything we were ever going to talk about but did you know that find me off was split again yeah yeah yeah. All right. Anyway, do you know the story? Because yeah, I, 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 I want to hear. It. I don't know any real like concrete details, but uh, that nobody who's listening to this actually cares, except for <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Yeah. 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 Connor Woodfin. We're going to talk about it on the Patreon, <laughs> uh, and I know you would really care. Uh, but yeah, they split again, so yeah. that's crazy. Um, anything way, uh, we brought you on the pod because you're a cool dude. You're pretty well, sweet. I'm yeah. glad you think so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you disagree? You disagree with that? No statement? comment. <laughs> wow, mysterious. He's pleading the we could, fifth. We could add him, mysterious man. Oh, mysterious man to the that description. Um, Local ruffian, mysterious man. Yeah, put it in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna do it. Yeah, put that in the the <laughs> directory that we have. <laughs> yeah. The little black book that we we have in the corner of all our guests. Uh, guys, ostensibly the show is about something. Yeah, it's about us talking about our guests' monomaniacal obsession, the thing they're into right now. Mm-hmm. And Jack. And we bring you on the pod to provide that thing, that that topic. Uh, and so I ask oh, you. You're going to provide it for me? No, no. I, uh, I, we bring you oh. on the pod for you to provide it. Oh, I see. You see we, did he not get the briefing? No, did I you, not, him, you I didn't give him the briefing? No. No. I kind of chose not to prepare. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Take it from the gut. Whatever you know comes <laughs> Well, speaking to of the gut, we had an interesting conversation yesterday. We did. Yes. Do, would you do you want to talk about that potentially? I mean, sure. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you're really into ruffian this. Ruffian resident bad boy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rebel. Yeah. Total yeah, rebel. Yeah. I mean, I should preface this whole thing by saying that uh, the the entire idea of being on a podcast scares the shit out of me. <laughs> So you're doing great. I'm gonna need some more bourbon. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're as cool as a cucumber. All right. Yeah. So. Let's let's talk about what you were talking about yesterday. Then what yes. was what was going on? So with yesterday the guy? I, I uh, saw Jack. I went over to the house of one Doctor Dwight Lindley, who mm-hmm. said he'll be on the show in the future, which would be very cool. Um, and I walk into the kitchen, and lo and behold, I see Jack putting large quantities of red cabbage 
into a jar. Yeah. Mm. Not so, red cabbage. Well, ca- cabbage, cabbage tinted red. Been tinted red. Yes. Right. So he Did was. You, add, you added red forty to it. Or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For that energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. For those sugar content. Uh, but no, you you were in the process of making the Korean sauerkraut, as you described it, of mm-hmm. kimchi. That's so right. So you're you're now, you're a bit a bit of a fermentation head. I guess you could call me that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fermies, as they uh, Fermies, yeah. <laughs> as they're as they're called in the. There actually the biz. is a community of fermenters that he is learning from that do have oh. a special name. So oh, maybe, you want you want to hear about them? Yeah, I think we might as well talk about that. Okay. In so, but. well, I first got into fermenting things mm. when I was down at St. Martin's Academy, mm. which is a school down in Kansas that's like boarding school for boys but also a farm mm-hmm. so i was learning all sorts of cool things about food yeah uh and one of my buddies there he gives he gives me this book called uh, uh i don't remember what it's called wild fermentation or yeah. something like that uh a great book a lot of awesome recipes <laughs> but uh the fellow who wrote it sander Alex katz He's an odd dude, <laughs> as you can kind of tell by the name. Yeah. 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 Anybody with the last name Katz has got something going on. Yeah. 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 He's upstairs. Probably has a deli. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this guy, he's got, uh, he lives in, a, in what he calls a fairy community in mm. the mountains up in Tennessee. Um, dogs barking. Yeah, you're okay. like fairies. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? <laughs> 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 well, th- this guy and his community of fairies are uh, all. Hey, you can't uh, call them that anymore, dude. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what they call themselves. What they call themselves? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Is their word? Okay. They're all uh, uh, living with AIDS, mm. and they've lived for a long while. With Wait, no, AIDS. no. So this is literally what it is. Yeah, yeah. I thought. Oh, I thought it was something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm just part of me your story here. Yeah. <laughs> part of me that. Yeah. Yeah, they're all in there living with AIDS, and. Uh, this guy, he, he's very careful with this claim, but he seems to suggest that he might think deep down that the reason he's lived so long with this terrible disease is because of fermented foods. <laughs> <laughs> Any food? Just it, just the act of fermenting has increased his lifespan. Yeah, span. there's all this bullshit about probiotics and all that. I don't really yeah. care about that. Um, I'm sure other people do. Mm-hmm. I just think fermenting is really cool. <laughs> so, r- real, real fast, how do you a know so much about this person? Uh, hmm. And b, how are you learning from them right now? In as Shad mentioned, well, just in the book. Oh, he's he's not in. You're not in oh, yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> no, yeah, um, okay. he wrote a book. Is he alive? I believe so. Okay, but I, who knows? Yeah, <laughs> he was living with AIDS. Yes. Or, yes. <laughs> uh, which nowadays is like nothing. You take prep and you're fine. But uh, or you just eat a lot of sauerkraut. Apparently, you're fine. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, so he's got a whole manifesto in the in the appendix to this <laughs> <laughs> fermenting book. Uh, a lot yes. of like cultural commentaries, and it's odd. I don't really read that part. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I haven't really thought about fermenting for a long time until like I got the I was hanging out with the Lindleys and. Emma Lindley mm-hmm. really likes this sort of thing. So I said, I'll make some for, uh, some kimchi. Haven't done it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you want to know about it? <sighs> I mean, well, first off, I mean, I, I think it's obvious why you were interested in it in the first place, right? Uh, because of the, the, the sheer... What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> what, you're, the, you're the intrigue surrounding. Yeah, it. yes, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Is this, the, the 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 gravity of <laughs> this individual pulling you towards? Him. Yeah. Well, so I feel like if this guy is able to survive, you know, up uh, allegedly survive, a oh, yeah, legally non-distinct, yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, a disease of a nondescript nature because of fermentation. You know, he's he's starting at like a negative twenty-five and bringing himself up to zero. Yeah. Imagine the benefits that you're deriving with yourself at negative 15, you know? <laughs> yeah. You can bring yourself up to, to 10. There was a summer where I subsisted on rice and homemade kimchi. Mm. And as far as benefits are concerned, <laughs> just <I'm>, <laughs> ba- bowel movements were odd. I couldn't benefits. speak to the benefits. Yeah. <laughs> well, the benefit, I think, was that it was cheap. <laughs> yeah, very cheap. It was cabbage. I think yeah. probably the most expensive thing in that entire meal is probably the Goku John. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, which which is, for the uninitiated, is. It's a fermented red chili paste. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a Korean, Korean thing. Yeah. yeah. So I made kimchi. It's not at all uh, traditional, as far as I know. 
Yeah. It's just cabbage, whatever crap you got in the kitchen. You throw it in there. Garlic, carrots, whatever. But the interesting part is... Uh, like a jello. To... Just throw whatever you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marshmallows. Marshmallows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the cool part is like you got to create the, this environment, the proper environment for this very specific type of bacteria yeah. to grow in. Lactobacillus, which is in all sorts of things. But not beer, I think. I think if okay. if lacto gets in uh, beer, they call it skunked. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Luke Martin told me that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because part of the way that that's, that, that happens is that uh, it, like sunlight, helps the, the, the lacto grow in beer, which is different than, because you're not really supposed to put fermenting anywhere near sunlight if, if that's if that's correct. oh yeah that's why you're supposed Koreans to use like bury the bury it in the dirt yes mm-hmm. yeah better you use a really opaque jar or something mm-hmm. along those lines mm-hmm. so you're trying to construct those circumstances so what are the things that this salt it just needs salt it's just salt really like you can ferment any vegetable with just salt yeah salt, salt in water or just salt well um the salt will leach water from the vegetable mm. you may want to add a brine like if you're brining garlic or something just add water as well mm-hmm. but get enough salt in there such that no other bacteria can grow and if they can grow they're going to be beat out by the lactobacillus yeah um, and then it takes a week two weeks and then it's all fermented it's and funky it's funky <laughs> it's, it's funky delicious. fresh yeah uh, so uh, i have a question is there a vegetable that would not taste good fermented tomatoes Tomatoes. Really? I can imagine that. Interesting. They don't have it's much because like, of the high water content. Like it's too I'm not salty. Sure. I've never tried it, but Sander told me <laughs> not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you trust that man? I trust him implicitly. As it is like dangerous. <laughs> I kind of like the idea. It's like you can ferment whatever you like, but for the love of God, <laughs> do not do don't it. Do the tomatoes. Yeah, <laughs> for all that is holy and good. <laughs> yeah. No, Actually, from his description, it seemed like it would just turn into uh, like a strange. Gelatinous mass. Yeah, 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 I can food. imagine that you'd be drying out the, the Speaking liquid of content. Jello. Yeah. Well, yeah. they're also not structurally sound, just in general. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like after the skin is pierced, so I imagine it sort of dissolves. Yeah, in some senses. But no, I mean, I've, uh, it it's, um, sounds very similar to pickling, but a little bit more like bacteria based because pickling is kind of based on vinegar kind of breaking through cell walls if i'm not mistaken is that how but it works i've never understood the difference okay i think that's i think that's part of it i might might be off you know call me an idiot please uh but i i don't necessarily know what concrete differences there are between because isn't a pickle a fermented cucumber just fermented through a different method you can do fermented pickles for sure yeah is, is, so it is a, there might it's be a different like a different, different process methods. yeah because I always assume that pickling was a well, fermentation. Pickle, so you, you've eaten fermented foods before. Yes. Like it, there's a there's a bite, you know, mm-hmm. like that is it doesn't come from a pickle. Because like when you're eating pickled anything, it's vinegar heavy, kind of like really strong high notes. But when it's fermented, it's funky, really strong low notes, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. If I'm not, if I'm being silly. <laughs> did, did, <laughs> what does the expert me. have to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense yeah. to me. So wait, have you just done kimchi or have you tried sauerkraut or? I've done sauerkraut. Farmer's yeah. cheese. I tried, uh, I did try pickles. Yeah. <laughs> and it did not work. Yeah. For my, what reason? My, my father is calling me right now. <laughs> hey, that's right. Yeah, you put him on the phone. Hey, hey, dad, what's up? Hey, hey dad, what's up? Hey, bro, how are you? Oh, we're recording the podcast right now. You're on right now. Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what, to ask him what he thinks about fermented food. Yeah, the, no, ask it, him about yeah. Crete, Nebraska. Yeah, yeah, yeah just. Fermented yeah. food? Yeah. Uh, do you know. The thing I really love are those the red onions, the pickled red onions. <laughs> see, yeah. see, I'm having an argument right We're now. We're having an argument about whether or not pickling is the same as fermenting. Oh, uh, see, you might be right. Well, I do like, I do like um, when I'm having a broth. <laughs> Yeah. Are we on, are we yeah, we're on the same page. Sauerkraut is definitely <laughs> fermented. <laughs> yeah. I feel like fermented foods, yes. Okay. All right, we'll do. Well, thank you. I will call you after we're done recording. <laughs> See ya. Uh, so Zach has weighed in. He has weighed in. Yeah. He he's yeah, also is confused. About Crete, Nebraska. Uh, yes, I want true. To hear about we'll, be asking, we'll call him in the Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, he's I, gonna be here this weekend. We can ask him. Oh, that. yeah, that's true. He's yeah, gonna be here this perfect. weekend. If, if you want to see Zach Straley, I'm sure we're probably gonna be having a party of some sort every night. So, um, mm-hmm. the so s- similar to this, I realized so th- there's this guy who, um, 
does a fermentation thing on YouTube. The guy for like Bon Appetit. He you got to be clear the, the oh, a oh. fermentation thing. Uh, it's like he has a fermentation show. It's called It's Alive. Yeah, he's I the bon one of the Bon Appetit <laughs> test kitchen guys. But the thing is, is he's a fraud. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like, this is something that people don't talk about very often. Like he does some <laughs> fermentation properly, but he's famously done multiple recipes that if you follow his recipe, you'll get botulism. Oh, mm. nice. Yeah. So like, famously the the his brisket recipe, like brisket. Yes, brisket is technically fermented, mm. and it's uh and it's curing process. Oh. So. Oh. Uh, you you know Do continue. so you take like a um, you have my interest yeah you take a so let's see if you a can brisket you take plate. a you take a brisket and then you cover it and you get pastrami um, okay, so he has yeah, a yeah. He, has, he has his pastrami structure I meant to say pastrami not brisket but he uh, like in the description at the way bottom. It says, this is not an accurate recipe. Please do not attempt this. And there's just what? people like in the comments like, dude, you literally gave me botch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there are dangers involved, right? And is that, is that Okay, well, that's meat. I had never thought about meat as a ferment. I mean, yeah. aging meat, certainly. I've made prosciutto and um, bacon. But yeah. uh, I hadn't thought of it as a fermentation. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. How, how does one get botulism? Oh well, as far as I know, botulism is a an anaerobic bacteria. Okay. So it it commonly occurs in canned goods. Mm. Yeah. So with kimchi, you're protected from that if you do it right because yeah. it's open air. If you if you shut it up, one, you'll get botulism. <laughs> Two, <laughs> it will explode. Yeah. Because uh, there's so much activity in there. That Some fermentation. Yeah. All the yeah. little guys are eating all the little the little salts, the sugars, yeah. and breaking things down. That's that's one of the fun things about fermentation. Is it's full of little dudes. It's little dudes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> doing They're thing. doing what they love. It's like brewing. Oh, actually, another weird YouTube thing about brewing. Uh, <laughs> I, I went to this random YouTube channel that popped up, and it said, "How to make your own booze." Right now, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Okay." So I click on it, and it's like, "Hi, I'm Randy R. I've been a bartender in Vegas for 20 years, and I've been a booze hound for life." And he's like, "Like 350 pounds on the hoof. He's got alcohol face. You know, he's just like, oh, like the whale. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He goes home at night and cries over his pizza. Yeah. Ranch. Yeah. I miss yeah. some alcohol now. Yeah. <laughs> He does look and a like lot that. of it, but he's like standing. He's like, "All right, I'm gonna teach you how to make what some people commonly refer to as prison wine or hooch, <laughs> right?" And in the comment section, it's literally just 25 people being like, "You've rescued, you know, you've just saved the lives of 25 high schoolers." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like sitting there. He's like, "All right, so take your grape juice," and he like pours like like I don't know one sixteenth of it out, and he's like, and "Take a whole cup of sugar, maybe more if you want it sweeter," and just pours it in. <laughs> And he's like, here's a pack of yeast. And it's like literally you go to the store yeah, and you buy, buy bread yeast. yeast. And he's like, man, put like yeah. half a bag in there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, seal it, not all the way, probably to prevent botulism. Seal it, not all the way. You know, otherwise it'll explode. And put that in your uh, cupboard or something for like 10 days. It's not going to taste great, but it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's really leading into the homemade, you know. It's like, yeah. this is really good because I made it myself. But oh, I, I thought that was really funny because, first off, I didn't know it was that easy. That's literally it. Oh, yeah. Know? How um, do, how does one in prison obtain yeast? Probably you grow it. Yeah. I imagine you grow it. Because yeah. you, well, you, you can make a yeast culture just open air. Um, very easily. That's what yeah. sourdough is. Yeah. You yeah. put out water and flour, and then yeast gets in there. Mm-hmm. I just don't like to think about it. <laughs> is all. Yeah. It's just, uh, it just it seems it seems gross to me. Yeah. I, it made me it made me think like maybe I just try it. <laughs> <laughs> there was this guy in the comments who I, I don't believe this is true was like yeah you know one time I actually did this and I forgot it for like two and a half years and it tasted like sherry. And I'm like okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guys. Guys. This is a good enough time as any. Uh, to talk about uh, the fact that we could not do this without our patrons. Thank you so much to our patrons for helping support the show. I want to make a shout out to our top patrons, Sammy Roberts, Zach and Amber Straley, and Joe Papalardo, honorary top patron at the moment. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you all for your contributions. Uh, you especially have helped us uh, be able to do the show and buy the equipment that we have. Um, if you're interested in being a patron of the show, some benefits include Patreon Discord, 
a bunch of people on the Patreon, on the Discord. We play games sometimes. It's fun. As soon as I get that book in the mail, we're going to start the book club. We've got a book club going on. Thrift Books is yanking my chain. Yeah. at the $1 tier, you also get the episode a day early. At the $5 tier, you get access to the exclusive Patreon episodes, right? We record one after every single episode, and it gets randy. It gets raunchy. It gets crazy. Look, I just spilled <laughs> spilled a glass over here. It's getting insane already. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when we're on the Patreon? Uh, at the $10 tier, you get to ask us questions, and we'll answer them on the show. So here we go. Uh, Shad is, as, as I'm asking these questions, because this question is specifically for Jack Duffy oh. from Joe Papalardo. Oh, very good. Joe Papalardo asks Is Jack aware of how unique his own life story is? No. No. So you have no, you have no context that makes you feel as though you have had a, an exceptionally strange life. I know men who had much stranger lives than I. I mean, it, you don't want to judge things off of the top 1%, though, you know? Like, uh, you can yeah, be like in the my, top 10. My, my favorite ones are Robinson Crusoe, <laughs> Ernest Hemingway, Odysseus. Uh, uh, only. Oh, Odysseus. Uh, TV. But then you would have to have epithets like sneaky. <laughs> if you had a Homeric epithet, what would it be, you think? Oh, that's a difficult question. Most stocky. <laughs> See, I, I don't believe that the uh, Homeric characters give themselves epithets. No, I... I, I, I true. So there we go. I just gave I, you one. Yeah. Right? Most, yeah. Stocky. Most stocky. You are yeah. very firm in your, in your stance. <laughs> Thank yes. you. I, yeah. It's probably your former wrestling you know, nature. You, yeah, you, probably. You, yeah. Yeah. Which You're, is very Greek, so it would be, you know, exactly. It's also very gay. Yes. <laughs> Well, I know there's a, that there's, a, yeah. there's, a, there's a fermentation community that I think would be more than happy to include really you. Uh, if, uh, what would I have, Shad? You got to give it to me. I can't give it to myself. Um, I was going to say the paunch. Uh, the no. paunch. <laughs> well paunched. Well paunched. Uh, well paunched to Dylan. Um, perhaps hook nosed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Don't do such Those a thing to me. Uh, yeah. Come on. You, you do have a prominent schnauz. Oh, wow. Schnauzer. Yeah. Thank you, dude. You know what? I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not going to ask you what mine would be. Okay. You, you don't want to open yourself up to that? All right, cool. No, no. It's I know. fine. I can take it as much as I can give it. If you have something. so far as you have the same nose, you could be. Now, mine is ac- mine is a little bit more. His, his, his has a hook. slightly. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mine is built to crack nuts open so that I can feed in the. Summer and winter time. Uh, <laughs> whereas Shad's is is more of a, a rhinoceros is kind of situation. Uh, right? More okay. so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how about Shad the Foolhardy? <laughs> you always got to put the epithet before the name. Oh, Foolhardy Shad. Yes. There you go. There you go. Uh, ring. Uh, this is not a question, but Boomer is on the Discord. He just wanted to ask. Uh, he wanted to challenge you to a rematch in jujitsu, and he says that uh, Boomer. Yes. Have we ever done that? I don't. I don't know. Sorry, but Appar- I don't remember. Yeah, but he says this time if if he wins, he ha- you have to give him a cigarette. So, <laughs> so I would do that anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I would gladly do a match with you. You enter the squared circle with Boomer yet again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just like old times. Yeah. You, uh, Maybe he kicked your ass so bad that you that you I have forgotten it. it. Yeah. 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 I so repressed that the concussion. So you gotcha. actually have some combat sports experience I outside do. of wrestling, even. I do. Yes. Or are you, you have a, engaged yeah. in some are you a part potentially of, illicit yeah. combat <laughs> scenarios? <laughs> uh, no. no. <laughs> Tell us about that. I, well, I don't know what you're referring to, Shad. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, but my whole family did it. Uh, we every tw- twice a week after school, we'd round up all the boys. Yeah, all five of us who were in the house, uh, and we'd go. We'd drive forty five minutes to the nearest gym, and we just work out for two hours. Yeah, uh, kickboxing and jujitsu and wrestling mixed in. Yeah, and uh, then you competed in wrestling. Yeah, I competed in high school wrestling. Okay. I never fought uh, doing mixed martial arts. Two of my brothers did, one of whom holds an amateur belt. I Whoa, think two amateur belts holds actually. Two amateur belts yeah, wow. in Nebraska. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that the Hell fighting yeah. scene is pretty tough in Nebraska. There's a lot of kids with farm grip. <laughs> oh yeah, there are some. There are some guys who wrestle more cows than human beings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're tough. You know? <laughs> yeah, I imagine like wrestling state must be intense it's like ohio like that where like ohio is famously it's a lot of cornbread yeah corn sorry corn fed uh yeah i i um 
Well, actually, as somebody who's done combat sports before, what do you think about rice exercising? Are you familiar with this? Please explain. When you shove your whole arm into a bucket of rice and then open and close your fist. Oh, I've never done that, but I imagine it'd be a really I, uh, good exercise. One of my roommates did. <laughs> yeah. Nick Earl. He would. He was. Uh, Who he could was. forget Nick Earl? Nobody could. <laughs> you got to have Nick on the we show. Have Nick on, yeah, yeah. He's too busy gallivanting in Europe to, to be on the damn show. Yeah. Um, so that's got to be like a kung fu thing. No, right? it's actually no, it a was, rock climbing. Yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. Oh. It's for grip strength. It's for grip strength. Because yeah, he liked to free climb if he can if he could do it. And huh. He would he would go. I remember him like it taking him weirdly a long amount of time to acquire a bucket of rice. <laughs> like it was a process. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, these guys totally shorted me on this rice." Or, <laughs> <laughs> just go to the store, buy some basmati, <laughs> yeah. splurge a little bit. Uh, come on. No, uh, we never did the rice thing. We yeah. would do the farmer carry, okay. where you just take buckets and fill them up with water and walk down the street or yeah. up the stairs or something like that. Yeah, I was reading the article the other day about rucking and about how you know you can get like it's like a good strength combo cardio exercise right where you yeah. just you just do a long walk but you introduce you have like 50 pounds yeah, in your pack yeah 50 yeah. pounds in your pack you know like a soldier mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that when you have to go to war uh yesterday my um, i told my wife that i think i was gonna quit my job and join the military and uh she said that uh, she doesn't think i could do it she doesn't think i could do it so, <laughs> I don't know how you feel. I don't, about, think you I don't could know. Do it either. I think I could. I think I could do it. How are your well, legs? They're after... Desperate. You know? Yeah, that's true. They are kind of desperate. I think you definitely could. Yeah, yeah. If that I makes think you I could make better, it through basic it. training. She said I couldn't make it through basic training. I think I could do it. This actually sounds like it'd be kind of a fun thing to try and like actually do this spring. Is to see if we could. If you if we can get Dylan to train join up the military, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a fun casual thing for <laughs> us to do spring, while yeah. we're bored. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean like see if we can get you to train up so you could pass the basic exam. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, so here's the thing. Is this here's is the thing I is I don't want to work out. <laughs> no, no, no. So this is that's the problem, right? Yeah. Is that I, I said like, hey, you know, uh, she's like, are you, well then go on a run like tomorrow, and I was like, I <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to, and she's like, well, I was like. I, you're you're not threatening to, threatening to kill me. Like so, there's no reason. They wouldn't threaten to kill you at basic. I mean, but like, you can drop out of basic. But just but you, you can't. Know. I thought you were in. Really? You were in. Yeah. I thought you could drop out. No, you can't. It's very hard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be like, ooh, my foot. Yeah. Ooh, my footsie. I miss my mom. Be, like, you have to do gay acts or get injured. Okay, That's so you you have to you have to put the moves on a fellow soldier or get injured. I'm only capable of one of those. <laughs> I don't, don't know allow that yet. I, mean, I think it's just the it's just they, fr- they it's 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 like you <laughs> it's like fraternization <laughs> and, and I imagine the same thing would apply if you were putting the moves on a fellow female soldier. Uh, so <laughs> okay, so so the idea yeah. would be is like I'd like to go do a thing where I don't have any thoughts whatsoever in my head besides do thing that person tell me to do right like that's mm. I was like I think I could do that. If you don't have the will to get up and take a run, then you don't have the will. Like you, I don't. I no, wouldn't no, have that's a the choice. Whole point of the military. Though, yes, yeah. you exactly. Don't have a will. Yes, <laughs> you, the your, your is ego is destroyed, and you you uh, are just an actor. You are a drone. I'm like I could do that. <laughs> right, like, I could follow. I mean, you're already that. halfway to the shaved head anyway, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Man, I don't know, man. I think I'm with your wife on this one. I we could try it. Let's look, look, this is what we do, okay? We do like the McElhaney Manor thing where we kidnap you. We do a fake kidnapping, mm-hmm. all right? We have Jack, like, kick you. We have a bag over your head or something. You mm-hmm. know, really put the grip on you. Yeah, <laughs> put the put farmer the grip, grip on, on you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, bring you out to a field or, like, you know, a campsite and just force you by... You know, with a with a baseball bat and a, you know various other torture devices to go through a couple of days worth of grueling training and just see how you work out. No safe word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, to answer your question though, my my calves and legs have hurt like hell for the last two days. I see, that's the thing. As I knew that would, because mm-hmm. yeah. after you finished playing, I was like, I remember when I had first when I first played a f- like a month and a half ago, I couldn't walk on day two really. So. I'm like, and you think you can do the military? <laughs> I think I could do it. I stretched before this last time, and it made a huge difference. I did, so too. So you do it again yeah. and stretch. But, but I, I got to. But anyway, anyway nobody cares about that. I actually kind of care about you thinking that you could do basic training. <laughs> I really do. I really like, do. This is not stolen valor. This is just this okay, is not uh, like. What if, what if we told you to do five push-ups right now? Could you do five real push-ups? I could do five real push-ups. Five real push-ups. Like, yeah. Real push-ups? Yeah. Real push-ups. I think I could do five. All right, let's let's let's, let's do it right now. All right, we're gonna have him do five push-ups because 
In the event that you are doing basic training, you are doing somewhere between, you know, like 50 to 80, right? We got to be able to get a good camera angle on this. So okay. Is this the best, this the best <laughs> yeah. place? For that me? looks like it's the best place. Yeah. I'm going to narrate because otherwise we're not getting audio. Okay, Jack, you got to be, Jack, you have to actually put, like, put some discipline in this boy. Okay. Okay. Ass is up too high. <laughs> He's having a lot of trouble, folks. Breathe. Gotta breathe. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He's struggling a little bit. He's struggling a little bit there at the end. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Drill Master Jack, what do you think on that one? Uh, I give it a C plus. Uh, C he plus. Passes. He passed. That's a passing grade. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hot in here? <laughs> Good. Okay, now imagine uh, another like 45 of those. For those that weren't watching and were just listening, I crushed that shit. <laughs> <laughs> really crushed that. In my uh, sleep, dude. I had to do six of them. That was a problem. They said the first one didn't count. I had to do six. That was a really shitty push yeah, up. Yeah, because you're because you were peaking. <laughs> you're Kilimanjaro down there. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, man. Goodness. Okay. All right, so okay, we do that. All right, what other things does one have to do in basic? You got to do push-ups. Climb a wall or something. Yeah, you have to climb a wall. Probably have to do a pull-up. Probably one. Probably one (laughs) pull-up. At least one. (laughs) I don't know if I. That's something I know for sure you can't do right now. That's that's true. Well, especially after five push-ups, I'm winded. I'm winded. These arms, they don't have, they don't have that kind of strength. Oh man, oh man. Yeah, you would probably have to train for a while before you even showed up. Well, they got some fat, fat fatties who show up to that thing, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they got got some chunky boys. They probably would, yeah. 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 They'd whip me into shape, you know? They'd really get you off your delinquent path that you're on right now. (laughs) Exactly. But that's what I, you know, that's what I was saying to my wife. I was like, you know, I just need a a new direction because things are just falling apart. I feel like, I feel I think you should try it. If if only for this reason, you get to meet a recruiter. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I have met a recruiter. I've met a recruiter before. Yeah. That is a. I had to. I told a guy over the phone no, and he like chewed me out for <laughs> leading him on. And I was yeah, like, like dude, I, whatever. Uh, thank you for uh, trivializing me going to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, All right, cool. I, I I feel like there's probably some manosphere influencer you could pay like three grand to like simulate going to basic. <laughs> Easy, yeah, that guy yeah. exists. I imagine his name is freaking uh, Lanley Barto. Uh, <laughs> I imagine I don't know you. Who that is. Oh, it's a, his some somebody who's related to somebody we know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Josh's, Josh's brother-in-law. brother-in-law. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Josh's brother-in-law. Well, I, I'm sure like there's probably a guy within driving distance. It'd probably have like some weird right-wing connotations. Probably be like Michigan militia, Michigan, Michigan militia run or something. But yeah. you could probably go and just do basic. There you go. You'd also probably learn how to shoot an AR-15, so that'd be kind of fun. That's pretty cool. Hey, if you guys, if you guys give me five thousand dollars, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Angel well, the military donor. will pay you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not to just go to the basic though. They'd probably yeah. like make you have to go do military stuff. Yeah, I'd have to like go yeah. to a place. What would you do if you were in the military? What do you mean? What branch? branch? Specialization. What would you hope you would do in oh. what branch? Uh, my. my... My pride tells me the Marines. I know you kind of have Marine you have energy, you have a yeah. jarhead kind of thank you a- aspect. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you mean by specialty? Uh, I don't know. Like, what would you want to do in the military? Would you just be a boots in the ground? You know, lead the way. I don't kind know. Of my guy? military imagination is is like non-existent. The military imagination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, like, are you like a uh, a bomb guy? Are you a sniper? Are you special forces? Recon? Like, well, yeah. to be special forces, you kind of have to be like... Special? Special. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. That's uh, one half of the equation. The other half, forces. <laughs> no, if I were to be in the military, like, I think I would need, I would want to see men die. <laughs> and you would want to not be because I want to see that, but yeah. because if I'm going to be in the military, yeah, because you, you you're not I want you're, to have the Odyssean experience. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get what you paid for with your ticket. You know, <laughs> I want to put my life on the line. Yes, like, yes. I think 
I need that experience. I don't want to live yeah. on an Air Force base in America. You know, that's, that's not true. what I signed up for. That's getting right. fat, eating Tex Mex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah. No, no, his wife would get fat. That's the. Oh, that is the classic The, the more Tex Mex I eat, the fatter she gets. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. That's actually one of the great secrets of, <laughs> of, of marriage. Tex Mex. <laughs> yeah. It's actually one of the mysteries of marriage. They go over this in marriage prep. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, goodness. No, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that if I was going to go branch, I'd probably go Navy, but it's because of legacy more than anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I don't. I like the boats. Too. Oh, yeah, legacy. My grandpa was a, he was a Marine. There we go. There South Pacific. Go. Mm-hmm. So that means you could, you know, you could hold your gun over your head as you walk through a river. That's right. While Fortunate Son plays. Yeah, so, Murder. like, I only know, like, one story about my grandpa. Um, yeah. And it's, it's become, like, my rite of passions, <laughs> passage story. If I'm ever to become a real man, I have yeah. to do this. Yeah. So he's in like uh, island hopping somewhere yeah. in the South Pacific, and this uh, this German shepherd, military dog, like goes berserk, just yeah. starts ripping people up, and my grandpa just kills the thing with his bare hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those those quick time events in Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I don't know how he did it. Yeah. I don't know the circumstances. I just know that if I'm ever to live up to the legacy of my forefathers, I have to kill a dog, a ravenous dog <laughs> with my bare hands. But what if it's like a ravenous, you know, like chihuahua, chihuahua or yeah. something? I don't think that counts. Yeah, it has to hit a certain weight class. I've shot mm-hmm. dogs before. Yeah. Which is a sad. I've had my old yeller experience. Yeah. Uh but but with your bare hands. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine having to choke the life out of your old yeller's childhood <laughs> dog. <laughs> Stare into its yeah. poor eyes. You yeah, watch it drain. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> Have you guys had an old yeller experience? Uh, I've I, never. Oh well, we got the goat experience. Yeah, we we had to. I we I watched a goat die. Uh, you watched it die, and you didn't even help. No, it 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 got poisoned, and then it just sort of. You could have given it the old. You could have pulled his trigger. That's true. <laughs> Not his, <laughs> preferably A. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I had to old yeller. Uh, I've told this story on the podcast before, so I'm not going to go too in depth on it. But I had to oh. old yeller a giant toad once <laughs> that my mother ran over the back legs of, and she handed me a BB gun and told me to go kill it. And it was like, it was about, yeah, it was about this big. <laughs> Whoa! And I walked over and I pulled the BB gun out on it. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I sh- went to shoot it, and then the I just saw the BB appear on the top of its skull. You know, just like embedded right on top of it. And it went, <laughs> <laughs> it started squirming. And I, and I don't, oh, I, 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 I shit you not. My high school biology teacher drove by. <laughs> <laughs> like, what you doing, yeah, Sam? Yeah, no, like literally he opens the door. He's like, what you up to, son? I'm like, well, I gotta kill this. He's like, son, you're just gonna have to beat it to death. <laughs> so I flipped over the the, the, the BB gun. The BB gun just started smacking it. Pistol whipping yeah. a frog. <laughs> Love it. So, you know, not I a, wonder if he remembers that. Yeah. I hope he does. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Bulgari. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I, I've, I've never had to kill my own pet, though. Okay. Yeah. I've had to kill multiple animals, but not my own pet. Yeah. I got a lot of animal killing experience from being at St. Martin's, my favorite story of which <laughs> when we were trying to butcher this pig, right? <laughs> so every Wednesday we would do... Content warning. Yeah, this is actually <laughs> oh, going to yeah. be our second... Pig butchering related story oh, on this really? show. <laughs> Who yeah. else? Morgan Morrison was on the show. We talked about being a, a oh. slaughterhouse employee. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I need to listen to that. Yeah, go ahead though. Well, this is uh, this is kind of disastrous. <laughs> but uh, it, every Wednesday at the at the school, we'd have farm day, and I would always run the butchering. I like teach the kids how to butcher pigs or sheep or chickens or yeah. whatever. And would they be like, you know, were you just processing them, or did you go from kill to? We would slaughter. Okay. And. Uh, process. Um, Did any like city boys really have a meltdown over it? No, everybody took it pretty cool. That's cool. That's but, a lot of like masculine energy. Everybody looking at each other, be like, "Yeah, no, I'm totally, yeah." I'm. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the, one of my favorite moments was seeing like this kid who I liked a lot. His name was Poppy. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of a. He wasn't exactly a peacocker. Yeah. No, he wasn't at all. Time to think of it. He was just like a normal guy. Yeah. Uh, but I let him used the knife one day on a sheep and I gave it to him and the look on his face was like, oh shit, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he did it. He did it well. But yeah. this time it was a pig. Yeah. And pigs are different. You Like with sheep, you just kind of wrestle them down, calm them down and then slit their throat real quick. Yeah. Um, but with a pig, 
there's a whole rigmarole you got to go through uh, because those things are strong. <laughs> you definitely can't wrestle. And they them really want to live. <laughs> yeah, they really want to live. Uh, but they're so single minded. So what you yeah. do is you get a couple of them separated off from the rest of the herd because if they're alone, they get really skittish and you don't really want that. But keep them in a pen and you just you cull them, starve them for a couple of days, basically. Yeah, uh, sets that. Everything gets cleaned out of their bowels, so when you butcher, there's not really a problem with contamination. But then uh, also you can keep them in one spot by just laying down food. And they, they're so single-minded that they'll just eat. Right? Yeah. They don't care what's going on. Because they haven't them. eaten in a while. Exactly. Yeah. So one day, I would ordinarily do the shooting. You just use a, we used a twenty two pistol. It's easy. Yeah. But uh, with a pig, like their, their, their faces are pretty big, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, the, and the brain is about the size of a walnut, mm-hmm. like right here. And you got to do this little calculation from the tip of the ear to draw a line from this ear to the eyeball. <laughs> yeah, the and geometry. The to the eyeball, and right yeah. there, yeah. that's where the, 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 that walnut is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one day, <laughs> my buddy's name was Seb, uh, this big Polish dude. He said, Jack, I think I want to try it today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, Seb. You know how it goes, right? Just draw the lines and hit the walnut. He's like, yeah, of course, I got it. <laughs> so <laughs> we lay out, lay down the food, and uh, the, the pig's right by the fence. It's like really easy shot right here. And the poor guy, he misses. <laughs> and this pig has a bullet in its face. Yeah. <laughs> and the pig is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you ever heard a pig squeal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can sort of imagine that, just like add in the fact that it has a bullet in its face. Yeah. <laughs> And it's running around the pen. <laughs> and uh, so we hop in there and we're like, what do we do? There's this pig and he's just running and running and there's blood all over the place. Finally, the pig slows down. He's just like sitting there. <laughs> and Seb's like, all right, I got it, I got it. So he's standing there. He tries this, to range him? Yeah, yeah. He's probably, probably 10 yards away, which is like, mm. For a walnut. With, yeah, for with a, a walnut. With a 22 with a, with a guy who's like, like the moment that gun goes off, and even before you're holding that pistol, like adrenaline is just yeah, pumping, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> even though it's like a pig and an animal, yeah. But I can't imagine what it'd be in like a real military context. But um, he misses again. <laughs> <laughs> but he hits the pig. Two bullets in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, I'm standing by with yeah. the sticking knife, just waiting for the thing to go down. Because once it goes, you want to bleed it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> The pig is squealing twice as loud now. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy, he's like, lumbers over me, hands me the gun. I can't do it. <laughs> like, okay, I'll, I'll do it, Seb. And I hand him the knife. And the, meanwhile, the pig has, like, escaped the pen. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are two gates. One, like, yeah. leading directly out to the road. One leading into this forest. It went through the forest. <laughs> <laughs> so it like, chase squeezed it its forest? way out yeah. of this gate and just starts barreling through the forest. So I'm like, oh, shit. So... I felt like, I don't know, I felt like a cowboy. I felt like Judge Holden. Yeah, yeah. Right mm-hmm. Blood and Rooney, just yeah. walking, walking, walking with a gun <laughs> in my hand, waiting for this pig to stop. An hour, like I swear. Yeah. It's like an hour of walking after this pig. Uh, and it's like whimpering. And <laughs> I won't describe it in too yeah. much gory detail, but it was bad. Um, yeah, until so. finally it, it reaches this this cattle pond, it's like way out in the, in the forest there. And... Uh, and there's a fence, so it can't go any farther. So there's there's a cattle pond, there's like a little dike, and then a slope and the fence. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes, makes it all the way down between the dike and the fence, and it's just kind of standing there. <laughs> so I'm creeping up, <laughs> and I get on top of the dike. I situate myself like on this tree, like right in the crook of it. And I swear I waited there for... 20 minutes <laughs> just waiting for this pig to turn its head because i i felt like i knew what was going on yeah. it knew it absolutely yeah. was going it, on it was just waiting you were waiting yeah. for it to consent to its death exactly <laughs> and I, I i felt as though it did me a favor when it turned its head just enough for me to see that damn walnut <laughs> and pow it yeah. went down so then what did you have the sticking knife with you at that point by that time my buddy had like crept up as well okay. <laughs> and then he rushed in <laughs> he stuck that thing up five times he was going he was going hard yeah uh, um, i i just imagine like wow uh, that's <laughs> how did wait, wait, actually real quick how did you get it back did you just pick it up and drag it we got a couple boys and we picked that thing up it was probably a 400 pound pig yeah i imagine <laughs> uh, uh, yeah it was rough yeah because those things could be could be huge uh 
you know, this is kind of like a trope, but like imagining the being in the place of the pig, right? In this instance, <laughs> having been shot <laughs> twice and having somebody power walk towards <laughs> you with a gun as you're running through the forest. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you kind of like Jason yeah. him from yeah, Friday exactly. the Thirteenth. Yeah, lumbered. Poor thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a, that's the bummer because like you know, as hoping to be a good steward of your animals, you like one of the things that you try to prioritize is making sure they have a good and 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 non yeah. terrifying death. Right? Yeah, and and unfortunately, things like that happen. Yes, I mean, yes. It what are you going to do? The moment happens. it's got a bullet in its face, you. You gotta kill me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no letting it go. Uh, good thing you guys didn't like panic and try to get it with the knife. That would have been really interesting. It would have been interesting. <laughs> it would have been a surefire way to get hurt. Yeah. But, <laughs> but would it have been cool as hell? It would have been cool as hell. You could have. Yeah. You could have, might have uh, ascended to Valhalla with your grandfather. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that could have done it for me. Now that I think about it. Uh, yeah. How are we doing on time? We're good. All right, uh, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, well, yeah, we we'll just on. wrap it up. Yeah, right yeah. after that story, that's a good way to yeah, end yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jack, for coming on. Uh, we're going to hop on over to the Patreon. Yeah, uh, if you're interested, hop on over to there to, to hear more uh, from Jack and, and us. And we'll see y'all. Later. Bye. Bye.